that we will drop our burden at the feet of Jesus and then pick the burden for the loss in our heart. It's one thing to lift, we drop our burden and then we pick another burden. And that is the burden for the broken world, our lost friends, brothers and sisters and family, that the Lord will put a burden in our heart, a burden of intercession, a burden of compassion that will compel us to get involved in their life for the sole purpose of bringing them uh, to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, that that which we are experiencing too, they can also begin to experience that peace that joy of the Holy Spirit that passes every man's understanding. Because if we really believe in what we believe, then we will do well. The only way we can show that what we know is true as we live it out and as we are not. Like Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The gospel of Christ Jesus is power. The, the gospel of Christ Jesus is freedom and it is peace. And that peace is what we give to the world as we share of the goodness of Christ. Amen. John chapter 4 from verse 5 this morning. And as we continue uh, in the same talk line, even with us, the Lord does keep confirming his word with the two testimonies with what we're going to be sharing and sharing together this morning. I believe that the Holy Spirit is just speaking to us, encouraging us and bringing us to a place of complete hope in Christ Jesus in this uh, trying time and difficult time and difficult season in the world. You see, when uh, when men begin to do wickedly in the land, those who know him shall be strong and do exploit. He says, when you faint in the days of adversity, that means your strength is small. And I pray that we will receive strength through his word in Jesus' name. John chapter 4 from verse 5. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus there, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat toss on the well. And it was about a sixth hour. There come a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. And for his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who is he that said to thee, Give me to drink. If you know the gift of God, Jesus said, You would have asked me, and I would have given you the living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. How deep is the well of your soul. How deep, how deep, how deep. And the well is deep. From whence thou hast that living water then? Are thou greater than our father Jacob would give us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall test no more but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, whosoever drinketh of this water shall test again, sorry. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give to him shall never taste. But the water shall, the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. I read verse 14 again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never taste. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, what an interesting thing. Everybody's 
is looking for that kind of water. And the woman said, give me this water that I test nor, then I come either to draw. And Jesus said unto her, go call thy husband and come either. And the woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. So you have spoken well. Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. Or let me read from verse 22. Ye worship, ye know not what we worship. We know what we worship for. Salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. Whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, God is a spirit. And those that worship him must not make worship him in spirit and in truth. And I am the living water. There is the water that I will give you in that discourse. And that water, if you receive of this water, you will not taste again. Not only will you not taste again, suddenly you become a reservoir of a spring, not a dead water. You know, spring water, uh, one of the purest kind of water, right? The spring water are pure and they are tasty, they are sweet to drink. And so Jesus was then very specific that when you receive from him, you become a distributor of the same grace. This is what we talked about at the beginning. When you receive, you receive to give. And so inflow results in outflow. This is what I want to talk about, inflow that will result into an outflow. Out of you will become a spring of water that will well up unto eternal life, an everlasting water that when people come around you, they will find something to drink from. But before I say anything here, because we're going to look at this American and look at a present day church that have become more of the same spirit, the Samaritan spirit. And this is why we need to drink from the right source. And we need to know what God has called us to, and where we are, and what we're supposed to do. So before I start saying anything, I just want to read some comment here by A.W. Tozer. Not my words here. He says, heresies or heresies abounds today with people believing only what they want to believe. Heretics emphasize certain words or phrases so that they can follow along and accept one while rejecting the other. Doing one thing but refusing another. This is what heretics means. They say heretics are pickers and choosers among the word of God. And so they pick and choose what they want. And this is what the Samaritans were known for at the beginning, back in the day. So, the most dangerous part, aspect about heresy is that in many regards, what they believe is right. And that is why it is dangerous, the one they choose to believe. It is not one, this is told us to speak, it is not what one believes, but rather it is what one refuses to believe that makes heretics very dangerous. If what they believe they are all bad, they will not have so much influence in the church today. What makes it worse is what they say you can accept and believe, and by doing that, they suck your life down a certain pathway and eventually lead you and me away from the truth. For it takes the whole truth to make it God's word. You cannot take only one slice of truth and disassociate yourself from the rest of the Bible. We all need to be careful not to ride on our favorite doctrine and theological belief while ignoring other things and compromising the power of God's word. 
The Samaritans were heretics in that they choose a certain parts of the Bible. And they had the Pentuagint and they accepted it, but they rejected. This was the Samaritans that Jesus, one of the ladies that Jesus was talking to now, this was the Habagra. They rejected uh, David, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, First and Second Kings and the Sons of Solomon. They rejected all the scripture except the Pentuagint. And so the Samaritans went one step further. They didn't just accept that, they retranslated it to fit their own culture. Like what is happening today. We, you know, they, they translated the Bible, they reconfigured re it, like we, you know, and they started all this new different translation, this different version, and that is what is creeping in, into the body of Christ today. So you can translate anything to prove what you are about to prove. This is told us this speaking. All you have to do is say you know a little bit of Greek and Hebrew. And after that, you are your own. And this is the dangerous part of the body of Christ today. Right? And people are picking and choosing. You have the, 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 the bandwagon in fact today where they will tell you the Old Testament is irrelevant, it's just the New Testament. Because Old Testament has to do... And then when people begin to get into that, and they are smart intellectually, and so they can lead you out and away from the truth in a very subtle way. And so this woman was a victim of that in a way. Even though she was hungry and desperate, but she had been brainwashed and her brain spiritually, theologically had been twisted by those who had gone before her, who told her, this is how to believe, this is how it works. Even though everything they were teaching her or had taught her was not the whole truth. But they had it enough, they learned it with a little bit of truth enough to sound convincing. And this is what the dilemma that we face today in the body of Christ. Many intellectual and pastors and theologians are taking over the pulpit. You know, the popular saying, why am I saying all this to say this? That is say, we hear in the world today that knowledge is power. Is that true? Yeah, if knowledge is power, knowledge is the acquisition of information then, right? Mm -hmm. So, if knowledge is power, the Bible says, in all they are getting, get understanding. Mm. If knowledge is power, then the question to you and me is, where is the source of your power? If knowledge is power, and if we agree that knowledge is power, and knowledge is the, uh, the acquisition and the procession or the processing of information, then where is the source of your power? Mm. Mm. Where are you getting your power from? Because if knowledge is power, where are you getting your power from? Mm -hmm. Where is your information coming from? Your information bank that you process on a daily basis because it's that knowledge that gives you power to become. Jesus said, uh, John speaking about Jesus in John chapter 1 verse 12, he said, as many that believed in him, he has given them the power to become. In John chapter 8 verse 32, he said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And so, where are you getting your power from? Because we're talking about inflow and outflow. Because what information are you taking in? Because what you take in will determine what comes out of you. Mm.
The reason why I'm saying this, because the catch here for me is verse 22, 23, and 24 of the same uh, discuss that Jesus was having with this woman, and she came and said, listen, you people, you see, this is how I feel like, you know how they get you confused. You people say, right, when anybody that is standing upon somebody else's word and not on the authority and in the integrity of the scriptures can be dangerous. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. He said, God is a spirit. Why is that important to you and me today? Because that is the word that has become a taboo in the body of Christ today. Spirit is spooky. You know, you, you know, like we were saying last Sunday, you don't want to talk about things like that. You may do things for the young people. They, you know, people, if you say things like that, you're not going to be relevant in this modern day and age. You need to find words that that excite people, that will and keep people coming back to the church. You know, you need to talk about, teach about, and teach about seven steps to success and how to be self-sufficient and, and, you know, all those crap that has no substance because to tell me to get deeper with God is scary to get deeper with God is old-fashioned to get deeper with God is not relevant for this age nobody wants to hear things like that that's what they tell us today if you want to preach about the Holy Spirit and, and being filled with the Holy Spirit and walking in the Spirit and manifesting the gift and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, if you take things like that, this, this, uh, this Z generation will not come to your church because they can't relate to that. The same Z generation will turn around and take a plane to the Middle East Seeking for something deeper. We need to get back to the basis, to the realm of the spirit. We need to begin to speak the language of the Holy Spirit. Because you and I are all spiritual beings having an earthly experience here. The realm of the spirit is more real than the physical realm. If we need to transact business with the Father, then we need to transfer, transact business in the same level, at the same platform or grace with him. We need to communicate with him in the language that he can relate to. If God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And to seek him any other way is not going to work. And the language of the spirit is sound and vibration. Explain. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the same was with Him in the beginning. Without Him was nothing made that was made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of man. The light shines in darkness, and darkness could not comprehend it. This is why, you see, every time sound is released, there's a vibration. Let me explain something again to you this morning. Now, when you speak, what do you feel? Huh? Every time your tongue begins to move and there's sound coming out, do you feel it all around your neck and every part of your body? 
there's a vibration that comes with it. So every time there's a projection that is coming your way and my way, through sound, there's a language that is being spoken in the realm of the spirit. So it takes the right inflow for you to release the right vibration into the realm of the spirit to make a change effectively in your world. So the right influence, this was what Jesus was teaching the woman from the beginning. For you to change, there has to be a new inflow because the power of communication, the sound that will come out of you will flow with a sound of life. In John chapter 7, verse 37 and 38, the Bible says, In the last day, the great day of the feet, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man text, let him come and drink. He that believeth in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly will begin to flow rivers of water. Have you ever stood by the river or the lake and the ocean and it's moving? Do you make the sound, the sound that comes forth when the water is gushing out through any source? Have you ever experienced the sound sometimes, the, the vibration that comes through the flow of the current of water is unimaginable stuff, and the power current that comes with water. And so can you imagine when the right inflow starts and, and then the outflow begins to regurgitate from your womb? The current that you emanate. Again, I give you another example. I'm going somewhere this morning, briefly. In Acts chapter 2, when they were waiting in the upper room for the visitation of the language of the Spirit that was coming upon them, the Bible says in verse 2, and suddenly, there came a mighty sound from heaven. Huh? Is that in your Bible? Acts chapter 2 verse 2. Can you open to that? Let's look at it. It said, there came from heaven. It says, suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing of a mighty wind. <coughs> The language of the spirit, the sound. First, it came with a sound, the rushing of the mindful wind. And it, 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 it again, just like a chorus, it kind of regurgitated from heaven. So, before the fire came upon them, before anything dropped upon them, the sound of the spirit, which was the language of the spirit, first of all, introduced the Holy Spirit. And then suddenly came a sound from heaven. The rushing wind, and they filled the whole house where they were sitting. You see, one thing with vibration and sound, any kind of sound has two effects upon people. Sound, when, when there's a vibration and a sound and a tremor, either that comes with fear or excitement. Huh? Am I right? When sound comes, when there's a sudden sound, or vibration that comes upon you, two things will happen. Is it that excitement or fear will catch you? You will cut off fear. And so when a man is filled with the water of the spirit, when the sound comes out of him, he sends panic to the realm of the spirit, especially in the kingdom of darkness. You remember the story in the book of 2 Kings where there was famine in the land for so long that a woman had to kill her baby for her and her friends to eat. And the Bible said, and there were four lepers who were by the gate, right? You remember that story? <coughs> and suddenly, the men made a decision. And they said, if we stay here, we are going to die. But if we go to the camp of the enemy, they may spare us or they may kill us. And the moment they uttered that word, let us go, the Bible says suddenly the enemy heard the sound 
There was no chariots. Were there only horses that came there? No. All they heard was the sound of the Spirit. And everybody ran. And everybody ran. By the time they got to the camp of the enemy, what was left? <coughs> there was no human being there. We need, we need the vibration of the Holy Ghost. We need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in all you're getting this year, in all you're getting this season. You should not be satisfied with just quoting some few Bible verses. You need the infilling of the power of the Holy Spirit. You want, you want to become that dynamite that every time you open your mouth, In Acts chapter 4, the Bible said, Peter, they opened their mouth and began to pray. He said, Lord, consider the threat of the enemy and enable your servant to declare your word with power. Stretch out your finger from heaven to perform miracles, signs, and wonders. And the Bible says, suddenly, the place where they were was what? There was a tremor. Vibration of the spirit can either create fear or excitement. The Bible says, for they who are eagerly waiting for him to them, he shall appear. In Genesis chapter 3, that's when we first saw where, when people are not in alignment, the reason why people are afraid of the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ today, the reason why we're not allowed to talk about him and to emphasize him and to preach about him and to teach about him and to introduce people to him is because we are afraid of him. We don't want to admit, nobody wants to be spooky, we want to be gentle. But it's okay to watch Harry Potter and get excited about it. It's okay to watch uh, those things on TV when people turn to vampire and they communicate a the spirit to sort of horror and the hands are turning. Oh, that is so exciting. Oh, wow, that is beautiful. That is so nice. Huh? It's beautiful and wonderful. Well, have you watched that movie? Have you seen that Harry Potter when he turned this into that? Oh, that is so interesting. Then you come to your church. And they talk about the Holy Spirit. Oh no, that is so spooky. It's not that. Uh, that is a little bit ancient. That is outdated. People don't need the Holy Spirit. When people are dying in, in, in misery, dying from depression, they are dying from pain. And yet that which will bring hope to them, you don't want them to be introduced to it. The devil is a liar. People run from what they don't understand. And people run from what scares them. And it, it, you know, guilty. The Bible says the guilty, not the Bible, it said the guilty man, the one said what? The guilty are always afraid, right? But the Bible said the sinner runneth when no man is pursuing him. I think the Bible says that. <laughs> and David turned around and said, the only solution. For, to, to avoid running is my thy word have I hidden in my heart so what I might not see against you. So in Genesis chapter 3 verse 10 we saw the first man who was afraid of the sound. The sound came and panic rolled. You know, the vibration, the Bible says in verse 10 of uh, Genesis chapter 3, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And they heard, in verse 8, said, they heard the voice of the Lord walking. They didn't see him. They heard a voice. You see, a voice is different from an echo. A voice is different from a noise. A voice is any sound with authority and power. So when you hear the voice of the Lord, he's talking about the sound of God, the presence, the vibration of the Holy Spirit that comes with power. So a voice is any sound with power and authority. 
So when they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, they, the, the presence and the manifest power of the Holy Spirit was working. And their sin just could not contain it. And they ran. The word, the voice of God, the word of God. And so every time you are filled with the Holy Spirit, what happened is that the vibration of the Holy Ghost takes over. And when you utter your word, it begins to ponder in the realm of the Spirit. This is what Jesus was trying to explain to the people when he was talking about the communion in John chapter 6. And they had that long discourse. And, and he said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part in you. And we all know the story that Jesus was not going to chop his body and give to them because he told them what the body was and he took the bread and did what he had to do. Then in verse 63 and 64 of the same, going through the same talk, he said the word, he said the flesh counts for nothing. And he said that. Then they couldn't get it. He said, listen, so for those who had Mis misgiving and misconception about what he was trying to say. In a way, he was given a twofold message, both spiritual and physical. He said, The flesh counts for nothing. He said, But the words that I speak to you, <laughs> they are spirit and they are life. So the words are spirit and they are life. This is why it is important what you take in because it is what you take in that is what is going to determine the kind of sound that will come out of you. Is that, are you, am I talking to you now? Mm -hmm. It's what you think. So the Bible said what? In, in, in Romans chapter 10, it said, faith counts by what? Hearing. Mm -hmm. And hearing the by the word of God. He said, there's no two ways. It's not, it's not hearing by the words of one orator or one motivational speaker. It would be better for me, honestly, and I think Pastor Cliff, uh, Keith will keep bear witness when we're talking about that. Uh, this is why I'm determined every week to bring those the, uh, declaration and confession. It would be better for some of us in the churches today to stand on a Sunday, even for 30 minutes, and read the scriptures than to listen to some trash that we've listened from the author. Please forgive me. Honestly, it would do us no good to stand on a Sunday morning, come together, and I read one chapter, you read another chapter, you read another chapter, and we pray and go home than to subject our ear to some of the things we listen to. Mm. And I think that is even better than any other voice of man. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by what? The word of God. God, but Romans took the temper seven thing. Why is that important? Because the inflow determines the outflow. And so the word of God must first have its full reign inside of you. Jesus said, you know, this woman said, I, I've been coming here and I tried to be Pentecostal all the time when I come to that story a little bit, but I try to be tired to each other. And I like to that Jacob's well to the book, to the church. I've been coming to church. He said, I've been coming to this well. Right? I've been coming to this well. I've been coming to church every Sunday, going to Bible study, and going to all the youth program and all the, 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 the gaming and all the things, the excitement they offer us in our church. But I still go home 
testing. <laughs> I go through the church activity. I come here every day. I show by this because the reason why I've been coming to this well is because I'm testing. And I tell people, whether a rich, poor, an addict, a prostitute, a Muslim, a Buddhist, any kind of human being, if they walk through the doors of your church on a Sunday morning or Wednesday evening, they are not looking for what they left. Amen? Amen? That's not what brought them. Anybody that does not know God, that came to the church on a Sunday morning, they didn't come to church because they're looking for good music. There's something they're looking for. They, they didn't come to your church because they're looking for motivation of speaking. They have opera and Dr. Field for that. They come because they are testing. Mm. I see. They come because they are hungry for something that the world has not been able to offer them. But as soon as we see them, we try to recreate what they left. And we wonder why, after a while, they leave us. Because you can feel that emptiness with more emptiness. So this woman said, give me this water. Church, you can't give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. The word of Christ must first do or do his work in us before he can walk through us. And so we must allow the word of God to walk in us before it can walk through us. We must allow the word of Christ to penetrate us before it can walk through us. Mm -hmm. Because if the fact, you see, Paul praying in Colossians in 3, I believe he said, let this word Christ dwell richly. Well, you know. mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Let it dwell richly, not just in passing, not just for some fancy phrase. Let it dwell. To dwell means to have permanent abode, to become part and parcel of your DNA. That when you, you see, this is where the vibration scares the enemy. Mm, yes, sir. Because every part of you begin to regurgitate because it's not dwelling inside of you. In John chapter 1, verse 12, he said the same thing. As many as believed in him, he has given them power to become the sons of God. In verse 14, he said, Children born not of human making, mm. but born of the Spirit. Yes, sir, amen. They said the spirit is not dwelling amongst us. We have beheld the glory of the one and the only begotten of the Father. We need the Holy Ghost. No, no, sir. So Jesus turned around. If you know the gift of God, is a gift. <laughs> it's not a right. You don't get it because you came to Jesus' wall. You don't get it because you're a pastor. You don't get it because you went to a Bible college. You don't get it because you're a professor of theology. You don't get it because you're an elder in the church or you sing in the choir. It's a gift of God. If anyone takes, let me come. 
Jesus said, if you know the gift of God and the one who is speaking to you, you would have asked me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you come to me directly. It is time, like I've been saying for months now, it is time for us to begin to point people unashamedly to Jesus. Amen. 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 Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ Jesus. Amen. For it is the power of God Amen. unto salvation, first for the Jews and then the Gentiles. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. He said, the Greek, they are seeking for wisdom, and the Jews are looking for signs, but we preach Christ crucified. Amen, yes, sir. Mm. Amen, yes, sir. He said it's a stumbling block mm -hmm. to the Jews, and to the Greek is foolishness. And the word has made the church to walk in that foolishness. So we don't preach the cross anymore. We don't preach the cross anymore. But Paul says, to those who believe, Christ Jesus is what? The power of God and the wisdom of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. No eyes have seen, no ears have heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men what God has prepared for those who love him, but he has revealed it to them by the Spirit, even the deep, deep things. We need to go deeper with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, sir. The Word is waiting for you. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, he said the whole world is groaning. I think that scripture has been fulfilled 10 times over in the last 12 months in our work today. Huh? Look at the groaning in the world. Look at the level of despair, frustration, Depression, suicide, divorce, abuses. Mm. We talk about Corona. The side effect of that demon, the groaning and the back pain it has caused many people today. The groaning in pain. And the Bible says, what? They what in the midst of that pain, they are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Mm. How can the source manifest without the spirit? How can the source manifest without the spirit? How can the source free the world from this bondage and decay without the power of the Holy Spirit? Paul says, I've not come to you with the enticing words of men's wisdom, but with the demonstrations of the Holy Spirit and power. So your outflow is in, is in direct proportion to your inflow. Jesus again speaking. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. Yes, sir. Yeah. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. And so for you, and I begin to round up now to pray, for you to have a good outflow, you must have a good inflow. We say that. That's why you guide your heart, guide what you hear, guide what you receive, guide what you entertain yourself with, guide what people you grant access to in your life. Because your communication is a function of the information you have. As a man thinketh in his house, so he is. Mm, yes, sir. Life and death. This is what Proverbs says. It says life and death. It says the power of the tongue. So that means the, the tongue has the power to communicate life or death. But my communication is determined by the level and the kind of information that I'm processing on a daily basis. If I'm speaking life, it's because I'm receiving life. Amen, yes, sir. If I'm speaking death, it's because I'm being saved with death. We shall pray. I will just stop here. But I, there's something that caught my attention. And I will just pause and I will say this. 
in John chapter 4, verse 11. And this is where I just want to rest my heart. I just want to stop and you know, continue because I made my point to a large extent. Verse 11, the woman said to Jesus, Sir, the well is too big. This is what I hear in my spirit. And I hear that word differently. Lord, my pain and my brokenness is too deep. I've been too wounded to be healed. The wells of my disappointment and the betrayer is too deep. You can't reach it. The wells of my sorrow and pain is too deep. I don't think Jesus can help me now. I've gone too far to be saved. My life is too broken to be mended. My situation, there is nothing that can be done about it. Do we become our own psychological doctor and pronounce death sentences over our life just like the doctors will look at them and say, you just have only two months to live. The well is too deep. You can't reach it. And the devil is a liar. There is no well too deep for Jesus. There is no brokenness that Jesus can mend that up. There is no light so scattered that he cannot put together. Amen. And this is what I hear the Spirit saying. And this is why we need the Holy Spirit. Listen to this well. The well of my sorrow, the well of my pain, the well of my depression, the well of my disappointment and abuse and the habit and the, it's too deep. I feel like I'm a person this morning. You feel it's too deep. It's too deep. I've tried to fix it. Pastors have prayed for me. I have fasted and and I've been anointed, and, I, and I've gone through the seven steps of deliverance and, and self-help and, 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 and all, all, all the stuff. And I've gone through the 12 steps and the 13 steps, and, and I'm still the same. It is too deep. But Jesus says, if only you know, the gift of God if only you know the gift of God and who is he that is speaking to you. You wouldn't dare say that. If only you know that you are loved. If only you know that this meeting was orchestrated by heaven just for you. If only you know that that well we've been talking about, heaven saw it. This is why we're having this discussion this morning. If only you know that God is mindful of you. Mm -hmm. If only you know that I love you with an everlasting love. If only you know that you are precious in my sight. If only you know that I will give men in exchange for you. If only you know that in me there is life and life abundantly. If only you know that I'm your light in darkness. If only you know that I'm the bread of life. If only you know I'm your way out of this crookedness. If only you know you will ask. And all it takes to get into this well and bring you out and feel you that you now the broken, the battered, the forsaken, the rejected, the nobody, the no good, the abandoned will become a voice. Cry. Come and see what the Lord has done. Child of God, the world is waiting to 
seal so that you can lead them to the one who can draw them out of their own darkness too. This woman embraced the fountain of life and suddenly out of her began to flow, you know the story, the living water. And she turned and ran to the city. Come and see. Come and see. This is me that you gave up on. This is me that you said there is no hope for me. This is me that you said my future is done yesterday. I am the same person. The one whom you wrote off because of the mistakes of yesterday. I am the same one that they gave that death sentence of. I was almost hung. But look at me now. Look at me now. Mm. Who did that for you? Come and see the man. Mm. This is not about church. This is not about denomination. This is not about a pastor. This is not about a bishop. This is about the gentleman called about the well. Mm -hmm. The silent man sitting there waiting every day. And all you need to do is open your eyes and embrace his word. The word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. There is a vibration in the realm of the spirit that you and I need to connect to by faith. And things will begin to happen. Amen. Are you ready for the man of Calvary? Shall we all stand up for those of us who are here? Those who are home. It is time. The man of Calvary. He has done it before, and he will do it again. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forevermore. He said, call upon me, everyone that is heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes. The word needs to get a new sound, yes. regurgitating out of you. The word needs to get a new sound of the spirit. A sound of like a rushing mighty wind coming out of you, oozing out like that woman, and suddenly she stepped into the city, and then the vibration that was following her, and the story that was bad before became a testimony. The prostitute, the name, you know, do you know that, that that name they used to call her down, they dignify it. The same name, the same name, the same name. But every time they call her heaven. The sound of heaven vibration takes over. And God wants to do the same for you. The gift of God is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If you're born again, heaven bound, and you have not received the Holy Ghost, if there's anything you should pant for, like the dead pants after the water, you need the Holy Spirit. That your belly, this foundation inside, that this deep well, let there be life again. Can we just put our hands in our tummy just by faith? In Second in Thessalonians, this is why we pray now. Right now, listen. The Bible said something. Be article of faith. You see, you don't listen to all this fancy, fortified theologians and debaters. Paul speaking to the Thessalonian church, he said, may the Lord honor every act brought by your faith in him. <laughs> any action you take. And so you are taking the action based on your faith. If not what you do, he said, may the Lord honor, this was Paul's prayer to the Thessalonian church. He said, may the Lord honor every act of yours prompt by your faith inside of you, on him. And so when you have faith in God and you lay hand on yourself, I don't know where the water is. It could be in your brain, it could be in your tummy. It's a symbol, it's a spiritual thing. And you can say, Holy Spirit, I just feel me and let your vibration begin to flow out of me. Lord, I pray for an infilling of the Holy Ghost. Mm. I pray for an infilling of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that the power of the Holy Spirit will come and just break this dam or stagnation inside of me. 
And let that be a staring right now that the endless expectations of the righteous will not be cut off. I expect a visitation this week. Holy Spirit, let there be, there be a sudden visitation inside of me. Fill me to the overflow so that out of me will begin to flow rivers of living water that will bring hope to my generation, to my children. So when I pray from today, I will be, the heavens will begin to back me up with the sounds of heaven. When I open my mouth, whatever is holding my daughter captive will hear the sounds of the chariots of heaven. When I open my mouth to worship the Lord in my room, whatever is holding me bound will hear the sounds of heaven. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let it be a feeling. Let it be a release in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus amen. We pray for an inflow so that it can be a ceaseless outflow of the spirit and power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus amen. Father God, release this grace upon us this morning. Visit your people with power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Furthermore, I pray for a revelation of Christ. Open our eyes to see you by the well in the name of Jesus. Amen, Jesus amen. May this week be this week. May it be that week that we have been waiting for, where the Holy Ghost will begin to romance with us in the name of Jesus. Amen, Jesus amen. Father God, we pray for a deeper hunger for you like never before. Thank you, eternal Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We will. I want to encourage you this week. Spend time with God even if you go home today. Lay hand on yourself. Call forth that spirit of God. Call forth for that indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. Let that baptism take place if you've not experienced. If it has went to sleep, wake it up again in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I believe that your life will not be the same. God bless you. Go with God. Amen. Amen.